أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Verse number six and we'll conclude with this ayah يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبينوا أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين O you who believe if a wicked person comes to you with news, verify it, lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become remorseful over what you have done. Now, why was this verse revealed? So, verses 1 through 5, as we saw, they dealt with the proper mannerism that should be shown, the, the proper reverence that sh should be shown to the Prophet. So the first section of Surah Al-Hujurat is complete. The akhlaq related to dealing with the Prophet and interacting with the Prophet. Verse number six begins a new discussion. And here the discussion, as we mentioned, is how should believers treat each other? What are some of the principles that guide, you know, uh, interaction among the believers? And it's interesting that the first thing that is mentioned as a principle to foster brotherhood and unity and love and harmony in the community is what? Don't believe everything that you hear. The first thing that Allah mentions when he speaks about how to create a society of harmony and love and brotherhood is, number one, don't believe everything that you hear. And how much, how much can this verse help us and improve our relations if we apply it? You know, a lot of the drama and a lot of the conflict, a lot of the fights that happen, it's because of a he said, she said situation. So why was this verse revealed? The Mufassirin of the Qur'an, they say that the Prophet ﷺ, he sent a man by the name of Walid ibn Uqba. Walid ibn Uqba. He was sent to one of the neighboring tribes that had converted to Islam, Bani Mustalaq. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would designate and he would appoint certain companions to go and collect tax revenue from the tribes. So Walid ibn Uqba was sent by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the outskirts of Medina, to the tribe of Bani Mustalaq, to collect zakat. He was sent to collect zakat. He goes, and during the time of, during the days of Jahiliyyah, he had conflicts with this tribe. So there was some bad blood between Walid ibn Uqba and the tribe of Bani Mustalaq. So he goes, and when he arrives, when he arrives in the village that they were at, all of the members of the tribe of Bani Mustalaq, they come out of their homes. Now, now their intention was to come out and receive him, you know, because this is the messenger, this is the envoy of the Prophet. He's the ambassador of the Prophet that was sent. So they wanted to honor him. So they all go out, and Walid ibn Uqba, you know, because he had there was some animosity between him and Bani Mustalaq during the times of Jahiliyyah, he assumed that they were coming out of their houses to kill him. So when he arrives and he sees all of these people coming out of their homes, he sees swarms of them coming out, he retreated. He ran back. He ran and it seems that he didn't even turn back. He ran all the way back to Medina, or he rode back to Medina, however he, he got back. When he arrives in Medina, he goes to the Prophet in a state of panic. 
The Prophet says, what happened? He says, Ya Rasulullah, when I arrived to collect zakat from them, they came out to kill me. Now the Prophet based on what he knew, he had no reason to, to doubt Walid ibn uh, Uqba. He prepares an army. That these people are refusing to pay zakat. They're, you know, the, the Prophet consider, considers this a declaration of war. And even, even in secular societies, threatening to kill an ambassador is a declaration of war. So as the Prophet is preparing an army to go and fight Bani Mustalaq, Jibra'il comes to the Prophet. Allah reveals this verse that Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah, this is the information that has been relayed to you is not true. Yeah, you and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this occasion as an opportunity to teach the Muslims a very important principle. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, O you who believe, in ja'akum fasiqun, if a wicked person comes to you. And Walid ibn Uqba, in certain circles, it seems that he was known to be fasiq. He was known to be a liar, a wicked person. That when you receive news from a wicked person, someone who doesn't have a track record for being honest all the time, what do you do? فَتَبَيَّنُوا فَتَبَيَّنُوا meaning فَتَثَبَّتُوا Verify. That information. What do we do today, brothers and sisters? When we hear something, and especially if it's a juicy story, we don't bother to verify it. We spread it like wildfire. And believe me, brothers and sisters, not only is the person who made up the story liable in the eyes of God, those who spread information, who spread rumors, Without verifying, they are also held accountable in the eyes of God. That when you receive news, and this news, it doesn't have to be an individual. It could be CNN, Fox News, whatever it may be. When you hear news, you have to verify it. You have to make sure that this information is accurate. Because if you don't, because if you pass on false information, or you know, fake news, as the term is today. And to sibu qawman bi jahalatin, that you will cause harm to people. فَتُصْبِحُ عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ. So there are, you know, sometimes it could be a fasiq, a wicked person, who's bringing, who's passing along false information. We have to be very wary of people who are known for being dishonest. That's evident. But sometimes you have people who are gullible. You know, sometimes false information is passed on, not by people who have ill intentions. They might be sincere, but they're gullible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want believers to be gullible. That you have to verify, especially if it's sensitive information, especially if it's information that can damage the community, that, that can ruin families. You know, and I, and I say this from experience, there are many couples who come to me and the wife, for example, is suspicious of her husband. She has no evidence. She just has suspicion. And she passes along that information to her family or her friends. And then what? The suspicion is relayed as what? That my husband was unfaithful. There's no evidence. It's a, it's a suspicion that gradually evolved into infidelity. And then, before you know it, this information is passed throughout the community like wildfire. And it completely destroys marriages. It destroys communities. This is what happened. This is what happens when we pass along information without verifying it. And to see Bu Kauman Bijahalat and Fatusbihu Alama Faltum Nadimin. 
that when you hear information, you have to verify it. And sometimes verifying it could be as simple as listening to both sides of the story. You know, if there's a conflict among two people, you can't just listen to one side of the story and pass judgment. You know, sometimes when we hear about the misconduct of an individual, you know, we automatically find them to be blameworthy. We don't ask, you know, is there another side to the story? How many people even ask, is there another side to this story? Do we give people the benefit of the doubt? Or the moment we hear any, anything, any gossip, we spread it. And especially with social media today, it's become very easy to spread information. You can spread a rumor across seven continents in a matter of minutes. And it could be false information. It can, it can ruin lives. It can end lives in some cases. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَنْ تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالًا فَتُصْبِحُ عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ And this, you know, someone who is fasiq, someone who is wicked, in, uh, in the Islamic tradition, their testimony, Islamic scholars, they say that we reject the testimony of someone who is fasiq. So someone who's known for being wicked or unreliable or dishonest, their testimony in court is rejected unless it can be corroborated. I think we have to conclude here. The, the verses, uh, verses 7 onwards require a bit more uh, explanation. So we'll conclude here. وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد. So we have a, some time for uh, for Q and A. Uh, in this verse, verse six, why does it specifically talk about uh, fasiq people rather than saying that you should be this way with most people? Because now this is this is a, a discussion. So the question is that why why does the verse specifically mention, you know, the importance of verifying information that is conveyed to you by a fasiq? Why not just everybody? The reason is because conversely, when we speak about information. Number one, the, the occasion of the revelation of the verse is related to information that was conveyed by someone who's fasiq. Number two, according to the verse, according to the, the, the implicit message of the verse, some scholars have understood that if, if you are given news, if you are given information by someone who's the opposite of fasiq, someone who's adil, someone who is reliable, then you don't have to verify that information, that you can act on that information because it would be too burdensome to, to have to verify every, every piece of information that you receive. You wouldn't be able to function if you had to verify every single piece of information that you receive. So the Sharia, some scholars have said that you are permitted that you, you are allowed, and in some cases you have to, you, you, you act on the testimony of someone who is righteous and someone who is reliable. In fact, if it wasn't, you know, many of our religious practices, many of our ahkam are, are not because of tawatur. You know, we have a few narrations that confirm that a specific thing is haram or a specific thing is mustahab. So, the science of hadith is based on the idea that the testimony, the information that is conveyed by someone who is reliable, we're justified on, we're justified in acting on it. Now it might it's it still might be incorrect, but we're, we're we won't be held accountable in the eyes of God for acting on information that is related to us by someone who is, uh, who is the opposite of uh, us, someone who is reliable and, uh, and righteous. But upon 
what is good meaning of fasiq is? So, fasiq, according to some of the ahadith that I was looking at today, fasiq, according to a uh, narration that I think is from Imam Sadiq, it means in this context, specifically someone who lies. Specifically someone who, who lies. Some scholars may extend it to, to someone who... Uh, who, for example, you know, commits sins publicly, but from what I've seen from the ahadith, it's referring to uh, someone who's known for uh, for their dishonesty, for lying. So, um, like the gullible that you were mentioning earlier, that wouldn't fall under the category of fasik. No, they're not. They, they wouldn't be fasik. But if if someone is gullible and you know that they're gullible, then then common sense would uh, would dictate that you would have to corroborate their uh, the information that they're uh, that they're conveying to you. Okay, thank you very much. Jazakumullah. So I, I, I think uh, next next Wednesday is probably going to be our last session before uh, the month of Ramadan. Correct. I think so. Yes. Okay. So next Wednesday will be our uh, our final session, and then we'll break for the month of uh, Ramadan, and then inshallah we'll reconvene with if if that's what you guys want. Inshallah, it sounds good. Inshallah, please All convey right. my salam to everybody and uh, keep me in your dua. We'll do inshallah. Take care. Jazakumullah. Fiyaman. Awesome.